your turn.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this Independence Day Sunday at Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Janet Wilson, pleased to be serving alongside my spouse this morning, Mark Wilson, who's going to bring the message. So we're kind of trading places, which might mean I get it all wrong. He'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be doing all the parts I usually don't do. Um, and just a note as you're watching or here, we fixed one problem, so we have the television monitor again, but the sound's a little wonky this morning, so we'll just do the best with it that we can. Um, just one note on the way in, there are some items in the bulletin, but one of the things I'm looking for, um, if you notice the little free pantry this morning, it is absolutely empty. That is the case almost every Sunday. And I'm just looking for someone to take a pre-packed pre bag of food and take it out on Sunday and restock that while you're here. It's a pretty simple thing to do. So just let me know if you're interested in doing that and we'll figure out the system. But the weekend is kind of a food desert time for people. There aren't a lot of resources available, so we can be one. Nope, they don't have to get the food. The food's here. I'll have it packed up in a brown paper bag. You just have to take it out and put it in the pantry. You know, take the food out of the bag. So pretty simple job. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> it says that we still have a fair amount of food here. It just comes in interesting ways. So we just keep sharing it forward. All that being said, welcome to worship on this day, and I will lead you in with the call to worship. I'm going to do that from this space and then move during the song, guys. So please join me in the call to worship. God's reach is endless. God's mercy is unstoppable. God's grace is lavish. God's love is constant. God's wisdom is vast. God's hope is stubborn. God's presence is here with us, among us, moving through us. Breathe easy, breathe deeply. We are in God's house. Let us worship the one who welcomes us home. And because I'm doing it, I didn't write a prayer. Okay, <laughs> please pray with me. Loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the right to be together in worship for this congregation, but for any gathered peoples in this country, regardless of religion and creed and doctrine and space. May we feel grateful on this weekend for that freedom, for the other freedoms that we share in this country. May we consider how we love one another, support one another, share with one another, even as we are sometimes divided by ideas and thoughts and ways to be. May we just follow you Listen to your heart. Consider the greatest commandment, as we'll be doing later in the message. In all of this, let us worship you today with body, mind, heart, and spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Jim Aldridge. And uh, I will preface the uh, music this morning by saying if anybody that's uh, a um, usher or sound person, if you feel like it's a little warm in here, would you please turn the fan on? It could be just be me because I've been running around here a little bit. But, whoops. So let's start this morning by singing the blessings of God in our country, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, 
for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for heroes' fruit in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine, till all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, Thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God man thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in love. We come to a time of offering in our worship together that we may give back to God of the gifts that we have been given. So as the usher comes through, may we do that with open minds and hands and hearts on this day, giving what the Holy Spirit asks us to give. Amen. It was beautiful. The, I have a brother in town for the 50th anniversary of the Battle Creek Central a cappella trip to Romania, which he was a part of. And so yesterday they gathered at First United Methodist Church and sang for a while. And I was part of a cappella a couple years later, and we sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And I remember how much that song gave me goosebumps, <laughs> and it did in the moment. So there's just some beauty in singing those patriotic songs, even as we kind of hear the words and know how flawed they are and we are. But we receive the blessings as we receive the blessings today. So please rise in body and spirit as we offer prayer and praise in the singing of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ. 
Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Pray with me. Loving God, we do thank you for the many gifts that we receive, for the gift of freedom, for the gift of being citizens of this country, for the gifts of life and of service to you. On this day, may you bless these gifts that they may be used to create your world, no matter where the boundaries are. We are your people, and we are grateful. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. knows there's much to add to that one. Um, in this time of prayer, I remind you that the back of your bulletin has the prayer concerns of this community. You're always welcome to share one of those with the office, to offer it on the Facebook prayer chain that is a side group from our regular Facebook page that you can ask to join or just call uh, me anytime and I will be happy to pray with you. So all that being said, my friends, let us be in an attitude and a time of prayer together. Loving God, we come to you today kind of echoing the sentiments of that video, knowing that knowing that freedom is found in our hearts, is found through you, and is found in you. While we celebrate the freedoms of our own country, in many ways we can see how fragile those freedoms are, both here and in other countries around the world, where coups happen, where elections are thrown out, where people cry out for democracy and for their voices to be heard. Let us never take for granted that ours our. On this day, we just come to you with the gathered concerns and joys and voices of these people coming to you, trusting you, having dependence on you and our interdependence day on this Sunday. May we always seek that trust. May we feel your love for you as we offer our love in return. All this we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like 
me to read the scripture? That'd be great. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. Well, now the microphone's working. It's jostling on me. All right. Scripture lesson is a perhaps familiar one from Luke 15, the tale of the prodigal son, the parable. And the beginning of chapter 15 starts like this. A certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. Then the father divided his estate between them. Soon afterward, the younger son gathered everything together and took a trip to a land far away. There he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up his resources, a severe food shortage arose in the country and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I am starving to death. I'll get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran to him, hugged him, and kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I have sin sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fattened calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasting because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He is lost and is found. And they begin to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. Coming in from the field, he approached the house and he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, your brother has arrived and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has received his son safe and sound. Then the older son was furious and didn't want to enter in, but his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, look, I've served you all these years and I never disobeyed your instructions. You've never given me so much as a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returned, after gobbling up your estate on prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Then his father said, Son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is found. The word of God for God's living people. Thanks be to God. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, so this is going to be part one of a part two, uh, two-part message. And uh, so I'm going to lay the baseline today and then dichotomize between the older son and the younger son as we go. So uh, Janet is getting into her uh, third base position. She's going to give me signals. Like this, or like this, or, you know, or like that. So I'll be, I'll be pausing every now and then, look at my signals, <laughs> and act accordingly. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get a little Pauline on you in the beginning, talking about uh, greetings and who you are in Christ, and talk about you know the spiritual life and what that is according to what I have uh, read and known. So. Uh, Hold on, be in a reverent state if you want to be, and uh, so here we go. Good morning. Greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Roger, slide one. The beauty of God's creation is reflected before me in all its glory on each and every face. Welcome to the wedding banquet. 
You are all beautiful brides joined in union with our wonderful bridegroom. <laughs> I, got a, I got a message from the manager back there. <laughs> Remember that the bridegroom has told you, the bride, that you are a unique manifestation of God. Created and known in God's heart before the creation of the earth. You were God's mind and loved completely. There will never be another you in all of creation. No more Janet, no more Mark, no more experiences like that. It's just, this is it. This is, the mold has been broken. <laughs> Past, present, and future. You are one in creation. The bridegroom has told you that you are a divine alchemy, a divine DNA, a bundle of original goodness made in God's spirit and dust. You are made in his image and likeness of the creator, breathed into by his spirit as a gift to do good works. Void by the spirit of wisdom, Sophia. So that is a slide of Sophia, who is wisdom. So that's, a, that's an interesting uh, icon. You are made a little bit lower than the angels. The stamp of, is on your soul. We are born in original goodness and is very good. And that's from Genesis chapter 1, as you remember. When you look into the eyes of the other, you are looking into the eyes of God, who has made everybody and everything. All are one. Deep down, we all know that. There is nothing to add to this exo exotic cocktail of skin, hair, blood, soul, and spirit. No magic formula to make God love you even more or love you even less. You are God's and always have been. We just need to wake up to that fact. The problem is that we just don't know or sometimes believe because it's too good to be true. All of this is inside you. Peace, grace, forgiveness, love. It's all inside. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, so it is all inside you. Unfortunately, we are the ones that shackle our lives in thinking that we must earn favor via rules, ritual, and dogma. Soon, some of it is good, but please remember, Jesus' burden is easy and his shackles is light. If any, his yoke is light. If any of the, if any of the uh, rituals, rules, or dogma in teaching involves coercion, fear, shame, it is not of God. Think about your spouses. Did you love them that involved coercion? Were you fear evoked to be together? Was either one of you shamed to be partners with each other or shamed because you are partners? That is not from God. We are one with the Jewish mother, our grandparent tradition. Yahweh told Abraham that he and his tribe will be a blessing to all nations. That is us. Our Jewish tradition told us that we have one commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. Slide number three, Roger, there you go. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is from Leviticus 19.18, I am Yahweh. Then your Jewish rabbi friend explained, uh, added to it, expanded, and that's slide four. Just love the Lord with all your with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's the greatest commandment. And then love your neighbor as yourself. So our Jewish heritage, we talked about a breath prayer. So let's take a minute to do that now. There is no Christian way to breathe. There is no Islam way to breathe, Buddhist, Russian, Chinese way to breathe. We all breathe as one. Humans, animals, life, breathe. Your breath is a gift. So open your mouth a little bit and breathe in through your mouth. So what the Jewish, one of the Jewish prayers, uh, breath prayer is breathing in is yah. Breathing out is way. So you're the name of God or the representation of the name of God is always on your lips every day. Your first breath is uh, intake in when you were born. Your last breath when you die is an exhale when you die. So when you talk about praying ceaselessly, you know, all through the day, think about the breath prayer as you go through your day. That, uh, that will help you a lot uh, when you go through uh, times or troubles uh, through the day. With this breath, the first thing about you could be considered a gift. The Lord has personally breathed into you and given you life. All life is from the Lord. You are participating in that life right here, right now. Jesus, through his directive to follow him, is here to show you that the abundant life, John 10.10, 10, 
to have it in the full. Jesus is fully divine and fully human, showing us how to live. The key part of this abundant life is to love. Love hard, love deep, love often with mind, body, and soul. Bear your soul, share your intimacy with others. It is a great gift that comes from the great cost to both God and us. So, well, I say all that, a lot of people would, might be saying, ah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's, what, what is gonna happen? You know, life is hard, what is going on? So, to, to respond to that, our life journey is a hard one. There are incredible highs and bone-crushing lows that include great love and great suffering. Great love and great suffering in life are the two commons that almost every human has, and it helps uh, us break down our dualisms. It cracks us open so the light of God can get inside. So it, it seems like God uses these to get our attention. And even when we're capable of ignoring, denying, and repressing the God moments in our life, but God can crack you open. He can pour out his healing light inside of you to bring restoration. God is your human, God is for your human development and flourishing to help you experience joy everlasting. So getting into the spiritual journey, typically the path goes through these archetypal four stages. You can, you can be at each one of these stages at different issues, with different issues at different times. So the first one is change. Change could be a summons, an invitation, answering the call to a great yearning inside you. Uh, with that change comes suffering. We all know about suffering. Through suffering can bring an aha moment, a great experience of joy, a learning. And then lastly, when you go through the full cycle, uh, you could be a teacher. You can teach others this way, this path. And we can be at all stages all at one time on many different issues. We can be in change and aha moments. We can be in suffering and teaching moments as we go through the, the path and the journey. So a little, put a little rubber on the road. This, let me briefly share with you some of my uh, change inputs that I call them that occurred in my life. Uh, disclaimer, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination and not meant to overshadow anybody in this room or watching on Facebook. Um, so this is, you might share with some of these collective life experiences. So the first one I have is, is birth, believe it or not. Birth is a change. Uh, there is a story, and I'll, I'll, I'll use Elijah and Anna. So when Anna came home from the hospital, <laughs> now they're looking at me. When Anna came home from the hospital, Elijah come up to uh, Brian and says, Dad, I want, to go in, I want to go into Anna's room and talk to her. Hey, Elijah. <laughs> uh, okay, if you want to talk to her, that's okay. So Elijah walks into Anna's room. They turn on the baby monitor pretty loud. Uh, Elijah leans over into the crib and talks to Anna and says, Anna, tell me about God. I'm starting to forget. So come from a spirit's place. That's a story that I'd love to tell. I love, I love to read. Um, my next one, hey, you're going, my dad, you're going to ball practice this weekend. This out of the blue, you're going to ball practice. Third one, first car, freedom. My first solo drive was past Janet's house, believe it or not. My parents retire. Hey, you're moving to Florida. We're moving to Florida. You can stay or go. The, the next one, congratulations. You are going to be an intern at Upjohn. Fantastic. Up John, the internship ended. Congratulations, you're hired into Kellogg's. Ooh, wonderful. Next one, we looked at your shoulder. It's separated. We'll have to operate. <laughs> Hello, next one. Hello, I regret to inform you that everyone in this room, that your job has been eliminated from here at the Kellogg Company. Yikes. Suffering ensued. <laughs> Uh, the next one, you were cordially invited to the marriage of Mark Wilson on July 25th, 1989. During, uh, after the marriage, hey guys, the ultrasound shows two heartbeats. It only turned out to be one. <laughs> uh, next one, 
after the layoff from Kellogg's. Welcome to South Carolina. We're happy you're here and working for us. At, at, uh, in South Carolina. Hi, I'm John. Come join our church. Okay. Uh, at the same church. Uh, Mark, we are dismissing you as deacon because blah, blah, blah. Next one. Your dad fell and hit his head. He's in the ER. I was in South Carolina. He was in Florida. Next one. Hello. I'm sitting in a car, minding my own business. Guy walks up to me. Is your name Mark Wilson? I go, yes, it is. I thought he was going to ask for directions. You're being served divorce papers. <laughs> Next. Welcome back to Michigan. Again, <laughs> Kellogg's. Uh, then a call from my daughter that still sort of haunts me right now is this. Um, she didn't make it. My first wife went into surgery. She didn't make it. So that was, that was tough. And then the last one is a joy. Hello, Janet. <laughs> so as you can see, and we can all write our stories like that, uh, our life arc and what the highs, the lows, the suffering. And hopefully we have learned from those, and hopefully I have. We're still learning from a lot of these that, that has come uh, to us. So um, Shakespeare's slide's been up there for a while. So uh, nothing is either good or bad, but uh, thinking makes it so. So you've probably been with a lot of friends that overemphasize uh, gloom and doom or, over, or repress the doom and gloom and, and always talk about happiness and joy. So it's our thinking that assesses that. So we want to be a little more holistic in our thinking about what is good and what is bad, and maybe it's in the same thing. So the next slide, number six, going, going through the rough times here. This, this gentleman, name is Dave Reaver, and uh, he's an evangelist. And when I was in that church in South Carolina, he, uh, he came and gave a message and he has been through many surgeries. I'm sure that's a uh, toupee. And uh, he was unfortunately uh, blown up by a phosphorus bomb in Vietnam. And he lived to tell about it. And he was burned over 80, 90% of his body. And he was talking about, he was talking about the whole situation, how the bomb came in, how he saw it, how he exploded. And then he was talking about how he was saved, how the medics took him on the canvas going to the helicopter to get him off. Uh, to the, um, to the medic, and his body, unbeknownst to them, was still glowing and on fire, and he fell through <laughs> onto the ground, <laughs> if you can imagine. So he's a, he's a little bit comical, and he goes, you know, you ever have one of those days when things... <laughs> so he had to be there, but that was, uh, that was, pretty, that was pretty comical. So in recap of, of uh, my little life journey there, um, change leads to suffering. Uh, Jan and I have a, have a def definition of suffering that uh, suffering is whenever you're not in control. And marriage is a lot of that. We're not in control. <laughs> Are you suffering? Yes, I am. Are you suffering? <laughs> and then you learn, you know, you have the aha, joyful moments of uh, understanding. You gain insight. You see something, how something came together. You notice how there is no coincidences. You, you see how God has used all your experiences, and you see how everyone is your teacher. And then lastly is teach. I, I uh, taking these insights, and if you have enough insights, having to share that with your tribe, your family, your church, your people at work, um, you know, everybody you come across. So the whole path, the whole spiritual path is based on your inner experiences, and the answer lies within. So we will dive into the rest of that path next week. So I'll, I'll talk more about change, the suffering, um, the joy, and the teaching. So stay tuned for that. So another, I, I got in red here, bold transition. So over the course of the past couple of years, we've heard terms like uh, spiritual practices, meditation, contemplation. Uh, we've heard a lot from the pulpit here. Janet has said that a lot. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about 
uh, what we think it is and what we think it isn't. And uh, then we'll start with uh, Bob Mulholland's four-fold definition of spiritual formation, which is uh, from that book right there, a great book if you want to pick it up. Uh, I don't think it's in the library, but we could throw a couple of copies in there. So change is a process. So his definition is a process of being conformed into the image of Christ for the sake of others. Spiritual formation, once again, is a process of being conformed into the image of Christ for the sake of others. So uh, it's a process. There's practices, there's prayers, there's lifestyle. Uh, being conformed is letting go. A lot of it's letting go of what you know, what you thought you know, what you like to do. And to be conformed in the image of Christ, we're already born into the likeness of Christ, so we, we need to get into the image of Christ, how he acted, what his passions were, and for the sake of others. So the last one is key. You know, we could stop and, and say, oh, I got, you know, I got what I need and let the others, you know, fend for themselves. But being in this church and being in outreach, you know, it's for the sake of others. So change is a process. Suffering, of be suffering is the being conformed. The aha moment is when you, uh, you never totally get there, but when you start to have the image of Christ and teaching is for the sake of others. So once again, we'll dive into that heavy next week. Um, but lastly, I just want to share um, the 12 spiritual practices, and this is from Wayne Dyer, and this is what spiritual practices are in, from him and what they're not. So um, this, will be, this will be my last thing. So stay tuned, everybody. Okay, Wayne says, number one, there are senses beyond the, the five senses you were born with. There's more going on here than you know. Remember, we are a combination of spirit and dust. Um, there was another teacher I loved that uh, he, he had uh, dirt in one pocket <laughs> and a little Bible in the other, that he is both spirit and dust as he, as he walks around. So, he, you know, we might be on the dust side for a little bit. We might be on the spiritual side a little bit. So he, that, that's a reminder for him to do that. Number two, we are never alone in the world of the spirit realm. We are never alone. God is with us. God is inside us. If you talk to St. Patrick, he's above us, below us, to the left, to the right, in front, and behind. Number three, when you get into spiritual practices, you, you, uh, you focus on, your focus changes from external power to personal empowerment. You no longer need to control the physical universe or dominate others or get or just to get more stuff. You know, work more overtime, get more stuff, keep up with the Joneses, buy that RV, buy that condo. <laughs> Number four, you are not separate from God or others. You are connected to all others, people, places, and things. Look for and seek the fullness of God in each person. This is key. Um, Creation is God's first Bible. God is in everything. He made everything and, and the others that we walk with and come across every day. So just remember that. Number five, there's more going on here than we realize. There's a higher power working in the universe behind mere cause and effect. So cause and effect rule the physical world. Love rules the spiritual world. So keep that in mind, that love rules the spiritual world. Meditation. This takes you, um, spiritual practice is big on meditation. It takes you into a brand new life. This could be a whole series on its own. Maybe Janet will do that here at some time. Uh, number eight, your intuition is guidance, uh, inner insight, inner experiences, increased consciousness. You're being acted upon by life by more than coincidences. So I like to think that everything happens for a reason. Everybody's your teacher. You, you're in a traffic jam for a reason. You, you meet somebody difficult for a reason. They're here to teach you. So if you look from that perspective versus shooing them away or, or not being open to them, uh, you might learn a little bit. Number nine, shadow self. Well, I'll explain that in a little bit. Empowers you. There's nothing to hide, nothing to be ashamed of. Be what you are 
for and not what you're against. Eliminate the hatred and anger in your life, which is key. So the shadow self is the part of yourself that you repress, that you put in your, that you put away, that you don't want anybody to see, necessarily. And if you repress it and deny it, it's going to come out. It's an energy. It's going to come out when you least expect it, and sometimes at the most embarrassing times <laughs> that I have found. <laughs> Number 10, we got a couple more to go. You have reverence for all life, including your own. Number 11, let go, grudges, hatred, fear, forgive. It's an act of the heart. How many times have we talked to, or Jesus talked to us about forgiveness? Do not fear, you know, every time he shows up, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Don't hate. Uh, talking to a people that was run by a, a, a Roman empire that was oppressing them all the time. They, they had a lot of reason to be hatred, that hateful. Number 12, last but not least, one more, please. Believe in miracles. They are around us every day. Miracles of new birth, healing. The universe is humming along. The sun came up, the moon came up, the stars rotate, the planets rotating around. So this, this notice that. Um, lastly, the, the, ecologi the ecological wonder of this planet, we should be in awe and wonder of its immense complexity. The, the seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. Uh, Janet being a gardener, she knows the seasons and how to act accordingly to the soil, soil and to the plants as we go along. So anyway, that's, that's it for now. That's the baseline. I, I know you took good notes. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're keeping track at home, um, he didn't speak one thing about the prodigal son. He didn't say one thing about that. So we'll, that's laying the groundwork. We'll talk about the, the older son and the younger son and the whole story and what the father represents in regards to everything that we talked here. So I'll put uh, more to the story, uh, to the parable that way. But uh, that is all I have for you today. Third base coach, in my, uh, should I take ball four and walk to, walk to first base? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, take out your pencils and your paper. There's a pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Let's prepare ourselves for our time with the Lord in communion. As we sing, uh, come share the Lord. I think many of you will recognize this piece. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Oh, come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No. Oh, wait. I got left behind. I I was thinking we were going right back into that other tune. Yeah. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here. We in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one who loved the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Though unseen, he meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels sing 
will see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the peace for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are all just completely out of our comfort zones today, aren't we? <laughs> but well done. And just as a, a preface, you know, thanks. Thanks to Mark, who's giving me a little space while I have a brother visiting and sharing his teaching of things. And I think we'll do an insert next week with those 12 spiritual practices, because I lost track of them too. And those are great ones to have. And so we are all on a physical journey through life. We're on a spiritual journey through life. And we come to this table today, just however we are, wherever we are, sometimes in joy, sometimes in struggle, sometimes in change, but we come to a God who is meeting us with his arms open, with his heart already way past whatever we've done. We are fully forgiven and fully blessed. And just a reminder that the communion table in the United Methodist Church is open to all. You are welcome to gather the elements at home that you may receive it with us, but it's not this church's, not mine, not the denominations. It is the table of the Lord to which we come. We're going to start just with a couple moments for your own inner confession to God, just letting loose of whatever those things are that separate you from God in your eyes. So we'll start with that, and then we'll have some words of assurance. Be in prayer. Loving God, you know us. You know where we are on our life journey, our physical journey, our spiritual journey, and yet you love us. Without reservation, without exception, with your whole heart, may we, in return, do what it is you want most and love you with our whole hearts. For this we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you and I, my friends, are forgiven. We come to this table. Mark, come on up if you would at this point. And we remember the story that on the last night of his life on earth, Jesus was having dinner with friends, drinking and laughing and celebrating and praising God and doing all that was done at the Passover dinner. At the end, he lifted a new piece of bread that was not part of the familiar liturgy and did a new thing, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. Whenever you are together, take and eat and remember. And then he held up a new cup of wine, and he blessed it, and he said, this is my blood, which will be given for you whenever you are together. Take it and drink and remember. And so we come today to remember, asking the Holy Spirit to pour out on these elements of bread and juice that they may be for us, the body and blood of Christ that in receiving them and in sharing them, that we become the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to that whole world, to all people of which we are a part. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As Sherry plays, you are welcome to come forward and receive the elements, and Mark and I will go through afterward and bring them if you are not able to come up. So at home, just take and eat and drink and remember. As we come to the end of 
worship just as we sang America the Beautiful at the beginning and in some ways sing praise to our country and for our country a bit in that song. We're going to close with one of Jim and my favorites. This is my song, which reminds us everyone feels that way about their country to some extent. As Mark said, we are all one in God's world and God's creation. So please stand as you are comfortable as we close with This Is My Song. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands of far and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. This is my prayer, O Lord of all earth's kingdoms, thy kingdom come, on earth thy will be done. Lift Christ, lifted up till all shall serve him, and hearts united learn to live as one. Oh, hear my prayer, thou God of all the nations. Myself I give thee, let thy will be done. As we leave here, as we go into the next couple days of holiday making and fireworks letting off or withstanding maybe in our neighborhood <laughs> as the adjacent parking lot seems to be the fireworks space of uh, Lamora Park. May you just be safe, may you be well, may you remember the freedoms of our country, but mostly the freedoms in God's world, being a part of God's kingdom for God's creation and all created beings. Go forth in peace, my friends. Amen.